A few months before I'm supposed to get married, I found out my soon-to-be wife is actually a deceitful, no-good cheater. It's a good thing I found out, but there's a couple things to the story. First of all, we have a very comfortable life, so it's really messing things up financially. Second, the house is in both of our names, but that's nothing. There's something I'm about to tell you guys which is absolutely wild. Let me start from the beginning here. Yesterday, I met my fiancé at our wedding venue for our four-month-out meeting to finalize some details. We drove to the venue separately because she was leaving straight from work. Towards the end of the meeting, she let me know her friend was dropping off her rental car and needed a ride home and asked if it would be okay. I said yes, thinking nothing of it as it wasn't that far out of the way from our home and I know her friend very well. I get home, try to get in touch with her for the next three hours. No answer. At approximately the hour and a half mark, I texted her friend and asked if she's made it to her okay. At this point, I was very worried. My fiancé ends up coming home and says sorry it took longer than expected. She hung out with a friend for a bit before leaving. Okay, no biggie. Just let me know next time, please. I was freaking out. Her friend gets back to me a few minutes later and says, Sorry, I could not make it to the venue. Did not see your fiancé tonight. I asked her why she would say this and she said she didn't know. She can't control what her friend says. And walked outside. I'm a bit sketched out at this point. I've never done this, but I looked at her phone records. Yeah, I did and don't regret it. I saw that when she went outside, she called her friend that texted me right when she went outside. I also saw an hour-long call with a number I didn't know on the way to the venue. I asked her what the rental place they went to and multiple other questions. She had quick answers and they did seem legit. I thought maybe I'm just crazy here. I need to chill and sleep on it. So this morning, I asked her, maybe, well, please, can I see the text from her friend asking her to pick her up and I would apologize for questioning her previous night? She says no. I said, when I caught up to you yesterday, on the way to the venue, I saw you were on the phone. Who was that with? She said, oh, that's the friend I picked up later on. That's when I knew for a fact she was lying. I said, I looked at her phone records and knew that wasn't true. She then changes her story to say, oh, I needed to meet up with a co-worker to discuss a patient. Who is the co-worker and why couldn't you discuss that over the phone? I need to show him the techniques in person. His name is Michael. Okay, I'm sketched out beyond belief now and we never lie to each other. So I asked to see the text messages with Michael. She said she would not let me. I said, why not if there's nothing to hide? Are you having an affair? Do you want me to not be together with you anymore? She pauses and proceeds to tell me all the things that are wrong with me. I work too much. I don't spend enough time with her. I don't listen. I'm astonished at this point. All of this is news to me. I put two and two together at this point and I know something sketchy is going on. I again asked to see the text messages. It took about a half hour of convincing to finally see the messages and they were crazy. Sexual in nature and talking a lot of crap about me. Also, how she wanted to be with him and how they're essentially in love. She started this job two months ago. He is her co-worker. He's also 20 years older and divorced with multiple kids. I've been financially supporting her for the last few months as she got back on her feet and was working extra so she would not have to pick up a part-time job. We own a house, which we both live in with three dogs and a horse. Sorry for this novel. I'm just beside myself right now. I did not see this coming and we're going to get married in four months. Any advice would be very helpful. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So today's story is wild. There's another update, but a lot of people in the original post are saying, I don't see how this can survive. Well, guys, just so you know, 
the next few updates are about to take a wild twist. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for daily videos, and here is update number one. Hey, as an update, I was finally able to sit down with her tonight and go over this. Again, she came in trying to blame me for what she did. Trying to justify the cheating and lying as a direct result of, well, my lack of communication and listening. She said she would not have to start talking to this guy if I had been a listening better. I spend too much time in the office working and don't dedicate enough time to her. I tried to explain that I was putting in extra hours to try and support her and the family financially while she was struggling so she wouldn't have to get a part-time job too. So she says she would have rather gotten a part-time job, which makes no sense to me. She was under the impression that because this was short-lived, one week, she says, and quote, they only made out once that we could move past this. Well, I thought about it, but when I brought up the text where she was trashing me and talking very sexual with him, even deflecting hard, I got nowhere with that. I told her that I'm not the reason that this is happening. She went too far and should have communicated with me or thought about the implications first. That I can never trust her again, and this is all because of her actions. Whether she wants to try and justify this as my fault is up to her. At the end of this part, yeah, well, it got a bit calmer in the air. I said, listen. We just really need to figure out the house we own jointly and the three dogs. We came to the conclusion that either I stay and buy her out, or we sell and just get new places separate. The dogs, one of us will get one and the other two. Well, to be determined. So, that's where this left off tonight and we'll continue to keep you all posted on the progress. Curious what you all would do about the house. Financially, I can support it alone, but it's nearly 3,000 square feet and 5 acres of land, which was bought solely to have her horse. She's taking the horse when she leaves and boarding it at a barn. Well, that's the update for now. Update number 2, Day 3. I was able to sit and have a 3-hour conversation with her tonight. We talked about our relationship and what led to what occurred. It started with her telling me what I did wrong in our relationship, lack of communication, spending too much time working on and off my phone. I don't disagree with any of the things that she sang. My mindset behind working so much was to support the family. I run an e-commerce business on the side and I'm a one-man customer service center. And uh, deals happen 24 hours a day, you know. I'm just simply never not on the clock. I could have certainly been better about setting my phone aside and responding to people the next day. The lack of communication was on both ends, and a prime example of this is the fact that I was unaware she was unhappy with any of this. It was never communicated to me. She said she felt I would have gotten upset if she told me, but never gave me the chance to work on it. I'm not a perfect person, you know, by any means. And many times I do or say things that are misinterpreted by her as rude. Here is an example of this. A week or two ago, I was trying to help her with a budget, with her financial problems to try to set up a plan just to get her back on track. To note... I work in the financial industry, and I do this for clients all the time. She had mentioned that she owed me maybe a thousand dollars, and she would get back to that the next paycheck. I said something like, I think it's a little bit more than that, let's go through the transfers I've made to our joint account. It ended up being over five thousand dollars. My purpose for doing this was not to make her feel bad, but to realize how much I've actually been contributing. She took this as me trying to humiliate her. Was just trying to help, and maybe my timing could have been a bit better, yeah, but... She told me I've been too focused on money lately, but I was only trying to make sure that we're going to be okay. We still had quite a bit to pay for the wedding, and my budgeting mentality was an overload trying to make sure we had enough. 
the fact that she keeps trying to justify what she did by attributing that as a direct correlation to my flaws really does bother me. She keeps telling me that she's surprised I would throw away seven years of a relationship just like this. Uh, I keep having to remind her, hey, I did not throw it away. She threw it away with her actions. But she told me that I've told too many people too quickly, and we could have resolved all of this between us, just the two of us. She said that she would not have to talk to someone else if I was a better listener and communicator. Well, I finally determined the extent of the affair, which I actually believe based on the text I read. They began talking two weeks before the via text. I don't know if they've met up before outside of work, but this time around, he had asked her to the park to play basketball and chit-chat. So, she met up with him and they ended up making out. I truly believe it didn't go further than this yet, but I would have in the near future, I'm sure of it, I would have known it would have gone further. She says he is not her boyfriend. She also took off tonight, and I have no idea where she's at, assuming with him or a girlfriend for the night. It's an awkward living situation, to say the least, but I'm hoping this resolves in the near term. I don't think she wants me to get back with her and try to repair that. I think that the main issue was a lack of communication that manifested for a long time. We got into a routine, lived our boring, simple life, and meanwhile, this problem was never discussed and grew. She acted out instead of talking to me and also lied to my face and talked a lot of crap about me behind my back. She can be very sneaky and I don't think I can ever trust her again fully. Obviously, this would be the easiest thing to do, but I don't think I would ever be truly happy. Understanding the root cause has helped me feel a bit better, though. If nothing else, it'll allow me to address my personality flaws and communication issues and just see things from another perspective. I started hitting the gym today, and I will keep a routine going. I also plan on picking up and studying for my CFP designation. I took the week off to work on the focusing on my mental health. Today, I called the wedding venue and officially canceled the date. We were able to get a portion of the money back, but lost a bit unless the date can be resold to another couple, which is extremely unlikely. I also spoke with her parents again to keep them appraised. Well, they live far away, and I'm sure they are worried sick. I continue to let them know everything's fine and calm, and they don't need to worry about their daughter. I did some research, and with interest rates where they are today... I will not be able to find a comparable house for the mortgage I pay for this. Can barely find an apartment for less nowadays. I think my best option is to try and buy out her share and have her at an apartment ASAP. She seems agreeable at this time and we'll have an appraiser come out to assess the value and see what half of the equity would be at, if that's doable for me. My question to you all is this. Does this change your mind at all about the situation? Am I handling this properly? If not, what should I be doing different? What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. So there's one more update. It came out nearly a month later. However, many people in the comment section wanted to answer that question left by OP at the end of that post. Here it is again. Does this change your mind at all about the situation? Am I handling this properly? If not, what should I be doing different? The number one comment says, I think you're handling it pretty well. However, properly? Ugh, I don't know. I would have kicked her out of the house long ago or moved out myself if I could not afford to buy her out. But I guess you're handling it how you want to handle it, so best of luck to you. Anyways, I'm looking forward to the update. So guys, many people are saying that kind of thing in the comment section, but let's just go ahead and see what's been going on. One month later with OP, here is your final update. Well, it's been nearly a month since this whole situation went down and I owe you an update. Has been a very busy, emotional, and eventful month. So, 
I'm not going to lie to the few days after this happened to me. I was feeling pathetic. A pathetic mess groveling to get back with this cheating piece of crap. It's embarrassing to admit, but it happened. And it was all part of the process of moving on. While in the vulnerable state, I tried everything I could just to do things right, make things better, but nothing seemed to work. I was actually told and she had to make a decision. Me or him. And she did the right thing choosing him. I think that's when I woke up and realized I've let my self-worth go down the drain. And I needed to take a step back and really focus on me and what was best for me. It's hard after seven years of doing everything for someone else to focus on yourself finally, but that's exactly what I've been doing since. I moved our joint savings account to an individual checking. I did the math on what was owed to me and transferred half the balance back to the joint account for her to take. I've been working out every day since this happened. It makes me feel good to not only improve how I look, but helps me continually just think clearly in my head. I've gone suit shopping for a massage, out with friends and family. Not only was this relationship isolating of my friends and family, which should have been a huge red flag, but I never did anything for myself. Buying clothes is just not something I would do. I was always worried about providing for my significant other and animals. I've been seeing a therapist, for the first time in my life, on a weekly basis now. It helps me talk things out and make my decision making easier. It's something I'll probably continue to do after this situation resolves, just to continue to improve myself. Now for the bigger items. I'm still living in the house with the ex. <laughs> She's sleeping in the guest bedroom and we're at the point where only communication is, Did you feed the dogs? I think she's a terrible person, and no matter what I say, in her mind, this is my fault. To accuse someone of being a bad communicator, and then using that as an excuse to then not communicate her feelings to me, and cheat, is, well, her being a hypocrite, and an easy out in her delusional mind. I stopped bothering trying to reason with her because she's unreasonable. I've been keeping the ball rolling with listing the house for sale. I contacted an agent, had them come, and was happy with the proposal sale price. She then requested that I contact two other agents and get their opinions as well, one of which was recommended by her friends. Yes, I made all the calls, set up all the appointments, and met with all these people, of course. This is how the whole relationship always has been. Even though it's not fair, I've been willing to do it all just to get the heck out of here. After meeting with all three, we ended up going with the first agent. Pictures were taken on Sunday and of the house was listed for sale Sunday night. Open house next Saturday, already getting a lot of attention on the RE sites. She'll be taking the horse to a barn somewhere, well, to be determined. I had a conversation about the dogs and offered to take one or none. She said she would take all three of them to keep them together, and they're a happy bunch, and I don't want to fight over taking one if that'll break them up. It also selfishly allows me to pursue a clean start. Unexpectedly, I met someone about a week ago that I've been spending quite a bit of time with. I have no false expectations here, but I'm enjoying hanging out with her. She's been through a similar situation in the past and has been helping me through this. It's really eye-opening speaking with a kind, thoughtful, independent woman. It makes me realize what a narcissist my ex was. Completely self-centered, dependent, and manipulative. I should have listened to the warnings from family and friends oh so long ago. I just definitely fell into the trap of being in a simple routine. I wasn't enjoying life. It was just an easy situation to be in. Nice house, lots of land, great animals, didn't want to rock the boat. So, I just continued on. You don't really realize this until you take a step back and truly reflect. Some might say, well, it was wasted time, but I'm really using this as a learning experience. I will not ignore the red flags in the future. I will not fail and fall into the simplicity of a trap, and I will continue to maintain relationships with friends and family. 
I just want to end this with a huge shout out to everyone on here that commented on my original post. I posted here because I had no idea what to do. Those of you that took the time to try to help complete strangers help here, well, you're amazing. I read every single comment and they all helped me get to where I am now. I'm looking forward to the next chapter in my life, wherever it takes me. Thank you. Truly. What's up, guys? So this story was pretty intense, especially if you're in OP's position. Many of the commenters are saying, thank goodness. OP basically dodged a bullet because if the fiancé didn't decide to stay with the affair partner, then OP and the fiancé probably would have gotten back together, which would have been a disaster in many people's opinions. Here's a couple commenters. So relieved the fiancé picked the affair partner. This poor guy might have stayed trapped forever in that relationship if she hadn't. I'm just thankful he found out before the wedding. Ex and a fair partner deserve one another. She'll probably be back later, anyways, whining about what she's lost and groveling at his feet. So guys, let me know your thoughts about this. Drop down below what you would do in the comment sections if you were in this position. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for daily videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.